it's hard to hear all of this, God. And I just I pray for Tara and her family. We just had a memorial service yesterday for her her grandma. And it appears that uh, possibly her, her grandpa is, is uh, soon to follow. So Jesus, we just we, we pray for healing. We pray for this miraculous healing. And God, it, it may not be a physical healing of his body. We, we pray for your will to be done. But I pray for this miraculous healing of, of the hurting and the aching hearts. I pray for a peace. I pray for a peace that surpasses understanding. When, when peace is, is presence, fear is not. It's got to pray for peace in every, every heart today. Whatever the circumstances, whatever the burden is, however heavy it seems to be, I pray for relief from that. Each breath we take, and we may need to like wiggle our arms around a little bit here, but God, I, I pray that, that it's the physical action that we take these steps of faith, the faith in action, as James 21, 22 says, the faith in action, this is where we see you. God, we just want to see more of you. We want to hear more of you. We want to know more of you as well. So I just pray for uh, just cleansed minds right now that you, you wipe away the cobwebs and you push away the distractions. You lift off any burden that was brought in here, any stress or anxiety. I, I pray that that's wiped clean from our heads. God, as I speak today, I, I, I want the highlighted parts to be heard. And it may be a different color highlighter, so to speak, for each person in here, but I just pray that the, that the words that people need to hear are heard so clearly that it penetrates their soul to a point where they say, Okay, God, I see you. Okay, God, I hear you. Okay, God, let your will be done. I'm letting this go. Letting it go. By the power of the name of Jesus, the one who conquered death, the one who was killed and buried, the one that was brought back by the power of Father that loved him so dearly and that loves each one of us so dearly. God, help us to accept. Just accept. Like, we don't, we don't even have to, like, dig for it, work for it, strive more. All you're asking us to do is let go of the things that we carry around and just accept what you have for us. It's a greater gift than we've ever received gift that, that, that we're not going to lose based on any decisions we make. Your grace abounds. Grace upon grace upon grace. We are made new with, new with you, Jesus. So renew us today. Strengthen us. Focus us, Lord, on your eyes. As we see you face to face and you see us face to face, we praise you for the days to come. Thank you, Jesus, for being here. May we hear you clearly today. In your name we pray. Amen. I don't always listen to my messages on YouTube when I speak, but I did last week. That's why I just blew my nose. Um, last week there was a whole lot of sniffles. So, you're welcome. And you're welcome, too. <laughs> Thank you.
timer. Set it for eight minutes. Ready? Um. <laughs> All right. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to pray one more time here. Jesus, I just I thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I just I just uh, I feel like there's a few different directions I could go, God, and I just want to walk with you. And I want these people to walk with you too. So maybe hear you today, Jesus, and uh, walk in action with you. Give us that boldness. It'd be extraordinary with you. Amen. All right. So you like those pretty colors I picked? Boldness for the ordinary. Um, so there, there was an opening this week, and I looked ahead to what it was, and there's a verse that's in here that has been, that, was, that God planted in my heart almost exactly five years ago. We were down in Belize, and I'm like, all right, I got I to take this one. So uh, praise the Lord that, that Donnie's going to be here next week. Super excited to have him around, and uh, just to see how, how God's going to use that situation. But without further ado, let's, uh, let's jump into this. A quick review from, uh, from last week. Um, Peter and John healed the, uh, healed the lame beggar. We talked about this whole idea of, of a, a welcoming church versus a friendly church. And let me just preface this by saying, I think we are a welcoming church. I don't think we're an unwelcoming church. But I think it's important for us to recognize the hope that I know I have, and I think a lot of us do also. We're going to need to be a more welcoming church because I believe that God can bring people um, so it, it's more of a preparation, right? It, it wasn't necessarily like a criticism, but I think it's like, hey, heads up. I'm friendly. I like you people. Um, but get ready. Um, I think God's, I know God's doing some, some good stuff here. So uh, praise him for that. Um, so uh, quick review. Peter and John healed the lame beggar. They looked him in the eye. They made that connection. They say, in Jesus' name, let you be healed. Let you be healed. After 40 some years, the man stood up, walked around, jumped around, started praising God, and went in the temple. And everybody was also amazed and in wonder at what Peter and John had done. What we'll get into today, they're like, it wasn't me, it's God, and it was the power of Jesus with that. Okay, so it's this whole idea of wonder and amazement. As you jump into the rest of Acts 3. I'm going to kind of paraphrase some of this because it's a whole lot of content. I highlighted the kind of the key parts of this. So after the lame beggar was healed, everybody's like, oh my gosh, you did it. While the man held on to Peter and John, I love that part because he was still holding on. He still felt this comfort and this support and this security, this connection with these people. He held on to those that used Jesus to heal him. And all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? I thought that was interesting. Why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? Why does this surprise you? Does, God, does the work of God surprise you? Or are we expecting? Are we eagerly expectant? Yes, God's going to do this. Rather than, I can't believe God did this. We need to get to this point where it's not a surprise, it's an expectation because our faith is so strong that we believe God's going to hear my prayer, God's going to answer my prayer, and also be open and accepting the fact that how he answers that prayer may be what I've found is likely different than how I think it's going to work out. But God's going to answer the best way that he can. God made everything in the universe, and I feel like all those natural things that are out there are pretty incredibly interwoven. And his plan has worked out well with that. So does the work of God surprise you? And if it's always surprising you, I guess what, what Peter's getting into over the next multiple verses here, he talks about a whole lot of prophecy. He talks about uh, all these uh, men from before the prophets that told these stories of what was going to be. And we're just getting out of Christmas, too, where there's all these prophecies for hundreds of years, like, hey, Savior's going to be born, virgin birth, all this stuff. And it was like, 
oh yeah, for sure, you know, and for generations they believed it. I guarantee you there's people that didn't believe it because they weren't patient enough to say, yeah, this is really going to happen. So Peter gets into all this prophecy like, hey, we told you it was coming. We told you it was coming. Listen to the prophets. Read your Bible in more modern day context. It says, you killed the author of life. You killed Jesus. I love that author of life. It's so beautiful. But when God raised, but God raised him from the dead, you killed him, but God raised him. Bad move, but it was going to happen anyways. God raised him. The power of God raised him. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see, the lame beggar, um, this man who you see and know was made strong. And I love it. You know him. You see him. We have this connection with him. This is a real-life example of the power of God. We are witnesses of this. You can all see. And this is, this is the goal, right? Right? So it's like, it, it's the experiences that change things, right? It's like when you're in school and the teacher tells you all this information, like, remember this. But when you have an experience with it, it sinks in. So that's our prayer. God, we just, I pray for more experiences that we see you. Now, for us to see more of God, we need to have our eyes open to God rather than just have our eyes open to our daily routines of how we go about things and what do you need to get done today. We have our eyes open to God so that we can see. There's a whole lot in this scripture, this whole section here, where it talks about seeing and hearing and speaking and listening. It's interacting with all these different senses, and it's just, it's great. Okay? Now, fellow Israelites, and we act in ignorance. This is all about the, the, the prophecies. Hey, he's going to suffer. He's going to die. I'm, I'm cruising through it because I want to get to the point. Then he gets to this point. Okay? And the thing we have to remember, I guess think about it like this. The prophets came and gave the information, gave the stories of what's going to come. Think of it like this. When you go to school, a teacher gives you the information. And they're like, hey, I'm teaching you this because it's going to be on the text. I'm giving all this information. Here's your study guide. Here's the lessons that you know what to do when you're put to the test, what this is, right? Very similar to the prophets. The prophecy is like, hey, this is going to happen. Wait till it happens. Hey, this is going to be on your test. Wait till it's on your test. Now, there are some teachers that will prepare you well, and others not so much, but being a teacher for a while, I guarantee you, I know there's kids who are like, yeah, I know. I know, teach. I know it's going to be on here. I get it. And you may be impressed, like, you're a really good teacher. You explain that really well. It's kind of like the kid that sits on, on the sidelines watching YouTube on his phone of how to shoot free throws. And he watches that same video a hundred times. Like, I got this. I got this. I know how to do that. I watched like 20 different YouTube videos on how to shoot free throws. And then coach puts him in the game and he airballs it. He's like, what the heck? I saw it happen. They told me about it. They told me what to do. But until we engage in that, until we practice that, until we believe what the prophets are saying and we look for those things, we're not practicing the faith. We're not engaging our knowledge of what it is. So Peter's saying... Why does this surprise you? And it's because a lot of these folks, they heard the prophecies like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I know. I know it's going to happen, but you don't listen to it, right? So you don't see the signs of what's to come. Because the prophecies that came true should bring you this confirmation. And the prophecies that are still there that have yet to come true, heads up. Steve Scott talked about this a couple weeks ago, and it refers right here. Heaven must receive him until a time comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. I'm, I'm not convinced that God has restored everything. Anybody else? This is the times to come. When God will restore everything. When Jesus goes up to heaven and when Jesus comes back. Have you been practicing your faith? Have you engaged with this? Have you believed? Do you believe that this is going to come true? And if it is to come true, are you ready? Are you ready for that second coming? Because what was said has come true, and what is still said has yet to come true. I wouldn't recommend being a cherry picker of scriptures. 
saying, oh, that's, that's good. I like that. That was pretty scary. I don't want to think about that. This, this is where our culture has, has gotten to a point where they're like, I believe this and I believe that, but I don't believe that. And it's this shifting sand. This is the rock. This is the rock. This is the consistent basis that we can stand upon and say the word of God is true without hesitation. And we're going to get we're gonna all kinds of flack for that, that's for sure. So Peter's talking about all this, hey, heads up, things are coming, the things that are happening now, we told you it was coming, this shouldn't surprise you. And then he says, you are heirs of the prophets and the covenant God made. The promises of God, and, and these, these prophecies aren't all like death, doom, destruction, despair. These are promises of God also. And the promises of God, we often forget those things, right? It's like we, we keep track of the promises we made to other people, but we don't always keep track of the promises that God has made to us. A few promises of God. God loves you unconditionally. You're never alone. You are redeemed and have an eternal home in heaven. These are all promises that we have to hold fast, hold strong to, and believe for hope in what's to come. God formed you with intention, and he knows you intimately, every part, and he still wants to be there. You are who the Bible says you are. God's plan for your life is to prosper you, prosper you not to harm you. The risk, listen to this, some of y'all, the risk that God is calling you to is worth it. You have a special strength available through faith, the power of Christ. God hears your prayers and can move through them. Hope is always alive in your life through faith. God can reveal himself to you and others through community. The number of promises God has is huge. 8,800. I remember it was, I think it was when Bill was still here, and I asked, we still have two services. The Good News Report, I said, who is something to be grateful for? And I still remember, and I'm not sure, what, you know, there's things that stick out. And Russ was back there, and he shouted out, what are you grateful for? And he said, God's promise. Like two words that have stuck with me for well over a year. But it's so true. It was like, well, what are God's promises? Look it up. Google, what are God's promises? You're not going to want to stop me. Look for the answers to your questions. Don't just sit there and wait. So he keeps on. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Uh, do you know the promises and, and the prophecies from God to his people? Many who heard the message believed, so, sorry, that the priests, those of authority, the priests, the Sadducees, the captain of the temple guard, they were a little upset. They're like, hey, Peter, John, knock it off. I'm like, you mean healing this man that's been here for 40 years? Like, yeah, stop. They're like, no. <laughs> because the power of my God is what we need to see more of. I believe in the promises. I believe in the prophecies. I believe what's to come is far greater than what you're limiting this world to, what you're limiting God of. So they took him. They seized Peter and John, put him in jail for healing a lame beggar in, in Jesus' name. Like, uh, we don't want to hear about this Jesus. La, la, la. They put him in jail. But many who heard the message, how did they hear the message? Because the message was spoken. The message was spoken boldly. And it shouldn't just come from Peter and John. It comes from the people. It comes from you and I that this world will be changed in a moment when we speak the name of Jesus. When we believe, when we walk, when we act, when we live, we think, we breathe. Standing on the firm foundation of Christ. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. Actually, the rulers, elders, they had Peter and John brought before them. They questioned them. They said, by what power or what name did you do this? And clearly they're going to say Jesus, right? Peter filled the Holy Spirit said, if we're being asked how this layman was healed, then know this. It's the name of Christ. 
that this man stands before you heals. It's not me. I'm not a physician. I didn't give him any pharmaceuticals that healed him. By the name of Jesus, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't have the ability to fix this man myself. Salvation is found in no one else. Salvation is found in no one else, no other God, where there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Preaching the bold and simple truth. Jesus healed the man. He can do that to you also if you stop fighting me. If you stop resisting, if you stop fighting God, push him aside, saying, I don't want to hear it, go to jail. You know God's power. You trust it. That song we sang last week, love that. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives in us. If we simply accept it, if we simply allow that power to happen. I love that song too that I shared at the very end last time. Driving 35 with a rocket inside. I didn't know what I had. We don't know what we have until we allow it to be used, which is the power of Christ. This is the verse. When they saw the courage of Peter and John, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. They were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. They didn't say they knew about this Jesus guy. It was clear these men had been with Jesus. The lame beggar that looked Peter and John in the eye saw the face of Jesus and he allowed that to change. Unschooled, ordinary men. Welcome to Crossroads Church. <laughs> I'm proud of what we've done the last year. Tomorrow will be one year. I'm proud of what we've done. I'm excited for what's to come. Uh, I'm not sure there's a better definition of unschooled, ordinary folks. My, my hand is way up. Woo! And you, you look at like the, uh, the resume of, of just education that Donnie has coming in here. Then you look at my resume. I don't have one, by the way. <laughs> um, last night before, uh, before the girls went to bed, I was working on this. I just went in and Paul and the girls were playing, playing a game. I said, hey, before you guys go to bed, can you just pray for me? Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool when you just ask your kids to pray for you. And they both said pretty much the same thing. Whether they knew it or not, I'm not sure. Quinn prayed for me. And uh, she said, thank you, God, that my dad is such a willing person. And then uh, Maddie said, thank you for dad's willingness to teach. Um, and I'm like, that's all God asks us for. Willingness. I'm willing. I'm unschooled. <laughs> I'm ordinary. But God, I'm willing. And what Mary did. Same with so many people in the Bible did. It's pretty much what everybody did in the Bible. I'm an unschooled, ordinary person. God, I'm willing. I don't know what this looks like. <laughs> this can be scary, but at the same time, when you say, I'm willing, you're also saying, may people be amazed. May people be astonished. May people be in wonder when they see the works of you, God, through me, because I'm willing. That's it. This verse here, uh, we're in Belize. Brian was there. Ulysses was there. Tara was there. In 2018, the first time we went down there. Um, so almost five, five years ago. And uh, we were sitting at dinner one night, and I was just, like, moved. And I've been reading through Acts. And I read this. 
I still have a picture, I think, in my Bible open at the beach in the background. And God just like, whoo, he put me upside down, spun me around, and he said, are you listening? And five years later, I can confirm, yes. And I've been teaching at that point, I can't do math right now, but I've been teaching probably four, 14, 15 years um, total, and I just felt God saying, are you willing to leave that? Are you willing to leave it? You're an ordinary unschooled man, but you can change like you can change the world. You can. And it, this, this verse, like I've thought about like getting like a stamp tattoo on my chest that says ordinary, unschooled. Probably won't. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, but you know, it's just like, but you own that, right? If somebody calls you ordinary, it's not a compliment. But when you look at who they were calling ordinary, Whew, sign me up. I want to be ordinary. I want to be unschooled in the world's eyes. Because in God's eyes, I'm far from that. But to be uh, this impactful, you gotta be you gotta be willing. And again, there's proof. But since they could see the man who had been healed, this is the seeing. The seeing is believing. And I was talking to somebody this morning. It's just like sometimes we have to believe before we can see. But when we see it, it's going to be like, look at this. Look at this. Like Lisa. Like, look at this. My boy called me. What's that? Healing. Healing in so many different ways when we're willing. When we believe, we can see. When we can see, we can point. Say, look at this. I witnessed this. I experienced this. And I'm telling you guys, the Bible tells you stuff. It's not like some people say, oh, the Bible's old. Old. Irrelevant. It's obsolete. And some people say, well, this, this part, this part's good. But that part, no. really? Because the world changes, we should? Hold fast to the truth of the word. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that they performed a notable sign. We can't deny it. This, this is all the high-ranking officials that are like, get these guys out of here. Like, everybody's seen this. What are we supposed to do? Everybody's seeing this. What are we supposed to do? And those who feel threatened often do what? Threaten. Hurt people hurt people. And this is what these guys were doing also. They felt threatened by what Peter and John were doing, and really by what Jesus was doing. They're like, get him out of here. Get him out of here. So they started threatening him, like, get out. Get out. But they're talking to each other. What are we supposed to do? Everybody's seen what these guys are doing. Get him out. Then they called him in again. And they commanded Peter and John not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus, but Peter and John, with this boldness and this confidence, they said to these guys, which is right in God's eyes? To listen to you guys? Or to listen to him? You be the judges. God can hear you right now. Right? Right? Should, you think I should listen to you or I should listen to God because you just saw what God did. You think I should still listen to you? You be the judge. As for us, we cannot help but speaking about what we have seen and what we have heard. To see and to hear, we have to look and we have to listen. But to see and to hear, we also have to believe first. Believe in the things unseen. Believe in the things unheard. Believe in the things we don't maybe understand yet. But know that I understand God. I understand his promises. I understand his prophecies. I understand the things that he guarantees will happen. And it may be one day when we all get to heaven that we're relieved of all these. Those are all worldly, temporary things. Who are you listening to? Are you listening to the chatter around you? 
what are you looking to see? Are you looking to see your solution to the problem, or are you just looking to see a solution to the problem? Are you looking to see God, or are you looking to see it, your hard work is going to get you stuck? Who are you listening to? Sometimes it's that voice inside our head that says, I, I know you saw, I know you saw God, but shh, people are going to think you're weird. People are going to think you're trying to convert them. People are going to think that, that you're that weirdo religious person. Don't say anything. Shh. You know how they're going to see you? They're going to avoid you because they don't want you to be talking to Jesus to them. Shh. Are you listening to that voice? Or are you listening to the voice of God that says, Tell the people. Tell the people. Don't keep it inside. Your quiet voice about my big power, it's just rotting you inside because you know you need to share it. That's what feeds the people. When you talk about the goodness of God, there's a whole lot of goodness of God out there. I'm going to sing about that more. After further threats, they just said, just, just go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. What a beautiful story. You think like how, how powerless and how helpless these men of the highest power and authority. Like, just, can you not, I'm not going to yell anymore. Can, can you just leave? I'll give you some gift cards. Just whoosh, go away. I just want these people to stop praising God because when they're doing that, they're not listening to us anymore. Because the man they healed was miraculously healed. He was over 40 years old. <clears throat> the believers pray. Why are they believers? Because they first saw. The believers prayed. So the people together, they didn't sit and wait for Peter and John to pray. They said, come on, we got to pray. They prayed together. They raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Are we praying together? Are we just talking about praying together? And it may not be holding hands, standing next to each other, but are we all praying? Are we praying for this church? Are we praying for Donnie coming here? Are we praying for God? What is my role in this transition? I love talking to freshmen when they came up to high school. Because it's like, hey, y'all, nobody knows you here. You don't have a reputation. This time of transition is a time where you can say, it's just like New Year's Eve, but resolutions are dumb. Um, well, for, what is it, 96% of the people, they don't work. But, like, we have to take these physical transitions in our lives and say, okay, now, like, for real. Now, I'm going to speak more. I'm going to proclaim more. I'm going to declare more. I'm going to sing more. Because people need to hear that hope of what's to come rather than just talk about the weather, the cowboys, the giants. People need to hear things that are uplifting, hopeful, confidence-building, purpose-driven. spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth, and he goes back to these prophecies also. And the people, as they're praying, they say this. Now, Lord, consider their threats. And in bold here, enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Speak with boldness. To be bold, we have to be brave. We have to be courageous. And going back to verse 13, they were astonished at the courage of these men that were unschooled and ordinary folks. You're going to astonish people. You're going to amaze people. You're going to bring wonder only when you're bold. We're not going to... When it's a copy-paste day, like, okay, this is what I do. I wake up at this time, and I have this for breakfast, and I go to work at this time, and I go home, and I go to sleep. And where's the boldness? Where's the trust? Where's the action of the faith walking with that to speak more? To, because the more you speak, the more we see. The more we see, the more stories we have to tell. That's the most beautiful thing about this last couple of years with Paul and I starting the farm and everything. 
like, oh man, it's easy to talk about God now. It is. It's like, hey, listen to this story. Listen to how God has lined this up. And it's no coincidence. And like I've had many people say, I have chills right now. Holy Spirit. But that happened. And I'm not bragging about myself, just like Peter and John aren't bragging about themselves. It happened because I said, I'm willing. I don't know what it looks like. I'm willing. But it moves people when you walk in that faith. You put it to action. Are your prayers for boldness? Do you pray big prayers? Or do you pray habitual prayers? Do you pray routine prayers? Do you thank God for your food and your family and your friends? Do you fall asleep and wake up and say amen? Or do you pray bold prayers where you can see God in massive ways? God wants all the prayers. But he wants us to pray bold prayers because that says, God, I, I'm, I can't. But I want to see you. I want to see you do this. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. After they together prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. You know, sometimes when we, when we sing up here, I just feel shaken, but not in a fearful way. Like the muscles are relaxed, shaken. Not tense, shaken. Which is what happens after we pray. We release that. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the Word of God boldly. They prayed for boldness, spoke the Word of God boldly. Pretty quick turnaround. And then we connect right here to where Donnie started us off a couple months ago. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed any of their own possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had with great power. The apostles continued with great power. How the apostles continued to testify, to speak, to declare, to talk about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, because that's what healed the man, the proof right there, undeniable. God's grace, amazing grace. There's something, man, when we sing that amaze going into amazing grace, where it's just voices, like just purely voices that God has given. It just, it's amazing. Grace. <laughs> Over this last year, we've, uh, I don't want to say we've lost people, but some people have moved on to other places. Just as it talks about, right? It's not, everything's not going to go easy. Life's not going to not change. As they say, the only consistent thing in, the, in life is change. But some people have left, which is, it's fine. Like, it, it is. It, it was expected, right? And our prayer is that wherever they, wherever they go, may God speak to them there. May God empower them and use them in those places. I had a conversation with one person that left. This person said, uh, I just feel like prostitutes is kind of dead in the water. And at first I was like, Um, but I thought about it more since. Jesus was dead. Then he rose. You can call it a church dead in the water. I'm not worried. It's going to rise. By the power of God. A cleansing flood. Uh, worship team, you guys come. Come on up. <clears throat> oh, yeah, the crossword. Sorry, I forgot about that. That's the exciting part, right? I made a crossword for you. Sometimes I get distracted and I can't stop. So. 
One down is crossroads. Fun filled in. It's kind of fun. Sorry I didn't put clues in there. It's okay. Uh, crossroads. Made of the unschooled and ordinary. The two across is unschooled. Three across is ordinary. Crossroads made the un, uh, unschooled and ordinary. But those but we're connected there by Christ. And when we're trusting in Christ, trusting in His name, across the church we're ordinary unschooled people that are brought together, connected by Christ. Trusting is part of Christ. Trusting in his name. From this, we're able to speak. Because we trust, we're able to speak of the things that we both see and the things that we hear. We're trusting in the name of Christ. And we speak of what we see and we hear at that point. We're we're amazed and filled with wonder. It's all connected. If we want to produce the amazement and the wonder, it's Crossroads Church, except that we're ordinary and that we're unschooled. We trust in Jesus, the name of Jesus that we will see, that we will hear, and then we can speak of the goodness that we have in our hearts because he's filled. So Jesus, I just, uh, I pray for the days to come. I pray for a boldness. Pray for confidence in what we read in your word. You give us this belief, this conviction, this trust in you and what you say, your promises, your prophecies, your covenants. Help us not to hold on to anything as tightly as we hold on to that. Give us the the, the courage to let go of everything else that we have more room to hold on to more of you. Jesus, I believe in what's to come. You've already equipped us. Continue to grow that, Lord. Do your thing. Help us to be amazed as well. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here. Not just now, but the presence in the days and the weeks and the years to come. The greatest present is your presence, Jesus. But we always know you're here. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, why don't you guys stand with us one last song.